Part 43 of Folk Truth Could Talk. Hello everyone, welcome back to my video blog of the Folk Truth Could Talk. I hope that you've been enjoying the last days of spring as we are marching quickly into summer. I've been working on a new book which I'm very excited about and doing a few other projects that I've tried to put the finishing touches on. I apologize that I've not been doing this blog for a couple of weeks, but we are moving on and I appreciate you hanging in here with me. We will finish up Chapter 19, Henry the Spy, and go right into Chapter 20, Common Friends. When Nurse Applegate knocked on their door, Helen answered once again. The nurse walked in first and then Henry followed. He had a very productive walk. He was sure that he could formulate a plan to spy out the land. When he walked into the room, his eyes met Helen's. She saw the slightest curl of his lip into his impish little grin. But Helen was quite upset and never smiled back. Here you are, Mrs. Tyler. I'm delivering Mr. Tyler back to you. I also have your medication, Nurse Applegate stated. Both Helen and Henry looked at each other as Nurse Applegate handed the small little pill cup with a couple of pills to each of them. Helen noticed right away that Henry had an extra one. Henry could not have told anyone what kinds of medications that he had taken over the past six months or so. Henry watched Helen's eyes and knew that something was wrong, so they both did as they had planned to do. They would pretend to take the medication by hiding it under the tongue. Helen only wished that Nurse Applegate would leave immediately. They did just that. Helen handed Henry his pills with a glass of water and Henry pretended to take them. But suddenly, Helen thought to ask Nurse Applegate if it was okay for her to take hers on an empty stomach. Oh, I'm sure it would be fine if you take it after you eat, Mrs. Tyler. Someone from the cafeteria should be bringing your food right up. Just make for sure that you drink a full glass of water with them, okay? Especially Mr. Tyler's. It looks as though his doctor has prescribed him something new for his severe allergy. Yes, Nurse Applegate, I sure will do that, Helen promised as she flashed Henry a strange look. Is there anything else I can get you before I leave for the night? Nurse Applegate asked. I have to meet someone around 9 o'clock or so, and it is 8.30 right now. No, sweetie, we will be fine. Will we see you tomorrow? Helen asked. Suddenly, someone knocked on the door. Both Helen and Henry flashed each other a frightened glance that Nurse Applegate could not help but notice. She knew that they were probably shaken up from the ordeal that they had just gone through. So she reassured them, I'm sure that that is your trade, Nurse Applegate said with an understanding smile as she opened the door. Sure enough, it was the kitchen leaving Henry and Helen's banana sandwiches. Nurse Applegate took the tray and placed it on the little bistro table. Bon appetit! Your gourmet meals await, she teased with a smile. Now, to answer your question, Mrs. Howard, yes, I will be here tomorrow. Looks like you and Mr. Tyler are stuck with me while you remain here. Tonight, the nurse at the front desk, Nurse Warren, will check in on you. She will not step inside unless you need her to. It is totally up to you. Good night and have a peaceful night. I know that you both must be exhausted. Good night. Thank you for everything, Helen said as the nurse walked out the door. Henry immediately spit the pills out into a little cup that Nurse Applegate gave him. They were bitter in his mouth, but had not dissolved. When Helen saw them, she said, The little white pill is one that you have been taking, but that big white one is a new one. Do not take it, Henry, Helen ordered. You must hide them somewhere until we give them to Amelia tomorrow. Severe allergy. What a horrible lie. Chapter 20, Common Friends when Nurse Applegate walked through the sliding doors to exit Glenview's residential home for the elderly, the air felt fresh and crisp after the earlier thunderstorm. She took in a deep breath as she loved the way the air smelled after a rain. There were still sandy puddles of muddy orange water in the parking lot. She walked this way and then that to avoid them until she got to her car. Once she was in her car, she began to think of what she would tell Amelia. She had to protect her father, just as Amelia was trying to protect her parents from Mr. Hodges. Nurse Applegate put her car into gear and drove directly to Maggie's Pine Coffee to meet Amelia. She dreaded talking about her experiences with Mr. Hodges, but looked forward to really getting to know Amelia. Nurse Applegate hoped to gain a friend in Amelia as they had 
much in common, and she never knew anyone in Mason Creek other than the elderly folks at Glenview. Amelia arrived at Maggie's Pie and Coffee before Nurse Applegate had. She took the liberty of ordering Mrs. Maggie's famous apple pie for both she and Nurse Applegate. Amelia had a trying day, and it felt good to just sip on a steaming hot cup of coffee. She spanned the room to see if anyone was there that she knew. The boys' coach and wife were sitting in the corner booth. Amelia took the time to thank them for keeping the boys from them during her daddy's escape. Just as she was headed back to her seat at the counter, where she had been sitting, Nurse Applegate walked in. Amelia greeted her with a smile. She turned to the counter and asked Maggie if she could bring another cup of coffee and the slices of pie to a back table. Nurse Applegate followed as Amelia led. Hello, Nurse Applegate. How are you? Amelia asked to begin the conversation. Please call me Melba. I've been a nurse all day, and now I just want to be Melba, Nurse Applegate said with a chuckle. Sure, I like that much better anyway, Amelia replied. Call me Amelia, please. Mrs. Steele sounds like I'm an iron lady, Amelia says to both giggle. How did my parents do after I left, Amelia asked. I hope they are adjusting well. You know, everything was new to them. No offense, but even you are new. I just worried about them as I didn't want Daddy to become confused. Well, honestly, they seemed to adjust to the room pretty well, but Mr. Tyler was a little disoriented this evening. I surmised it was because he had not had any of his meds today. They also had not had anything to eat since you were with them, so I made for sure they ordered them something before the cafeteria closed. Mr. Tyler walked with me to the cafeteria and everything, Melba reported to Amelia. Really? That sounds a little weird, Amelia said with a confused look on her face. Did he leave Mama alone? Yes, he left Mrs. Tyler alone for the length of time it took us to make our trip. I said trip because the reason he wanted to go was because he told me he wanted to see an old friend. I, of course, thought that he might have been talking about another patient, but instead he wanted to go back to his old room. Maybe it was because it was familiar to him, and then once he went inside, he took a picture from the wall. When I walked in, he was talking to the picture and told his old friend that he missed it. I have seen this behavior, Amelia, in a lot of amnesia patients. They get better, but out of the blue, they can revert back. I assumed, again, it was because he had not had his meds, Melba tried to comfort. Well, he is not as crazy as you may think, Melba. Oh, please, I did not mean to imply that he was crazy, Melba said apologetically. Oh, excuse me, wrong choice of words on my part. Let me explain. My daddy grew up in a house that was built by my great-great-grandfather. In the side yard of this house is a huge old oak tree that my daddy calls his old friend. The picture on the wall in this room is the picture I brought him because somehow the tree seems to comfort him and help him. I know that sounds crazy, but I was desperate to do anything that I could to help him come back to us, Mary explained. Ah, that is the sweetest thing. Well, it seems to have worked. I saw him hugging that picture just as though he was hugging a person. The look on his face was priceless, Melba shared. Thank you once again for tuning in to read along with me. It is my hope that you've been enjoying my romance suspense novel, Folk Trees Could Talk, for it has been my pleasure to share it with you. As always, I would love to hear from you. I want to thank all of you that have begun following my WordPress blog. Please continue to tune in as we are moving right along through the book. If you are interested in obtaining your own copy of If Up Trees Could Talk or any of my other books, please visit my Amazon author page here. Also, if you are new to my video blogs and would like to catch up on the story from the beginning, please check out the archives of this blog or simply subscribe to my YouTube videos as they are numbered and in order. When you subscribe to my WordPress blogs, I have a wonderful free gift for you as my thank you. I am also a weekly contributor to the Lakeview Times. All my videos are published each week at www.lakeviewtimes.com.